Right now, Russian tanks are rolling through freshly fallen snow toward NATO-controlled territory. Huge atomic-powered vessels crush the ice frozen atop the North Sea to create lanes for goods and battleships to travel through. The most important battleground in the world may be in the Arctic, and new satellite images suggest that Russia is doing everything possible to secure its position in the region. Let's visit a hypothetical yet very plausible scenario that could unfold in the Arctic due to aggressive Russian expansion. In the cold winter months, the sun never rises in the ice-covered landscape of the Arctic. The sea is frozen, and at the top of the world, a newly constructed Russian radar base scans the skies. The soldiers stationed at this remote facility are only a fraction of what they once were. Many men up in the Arctic battalions have been called south to aid in war efforts against Ukraine. A Russian soldier sits at his computer station sipping a cup of hot coffee. His body still hasn't adjusted to the endless night that the Arctic experiences. Even during the day, the stars are up. And from time to time, the aurora borealis sends green and purple ripples of charged particles across the sky. The Russian soldier leans back in his chair to check if his CO is nearby. When he sees the coast is clear, he opens the bottom drawer of his desk and pulls out a bottle of cheap Russian vodka that was smuggled in during the last supply run. He pours a generous shot into his coffee and takes a big sip. The vodka trickles down his throat. He feels a warming sensation run through his body. At that very moment, warning lights begin flashing at his workstation. The Russian nearly spits out his vodka and coffee as he stares at the screen. The newly installed Resonance N radar system has picked something up. The soldier turns several knobs and pounds on the keyboard to confirm what he's seeing. The advanced radar system has picked up a stealth bomber flying over the Arctic base. The soldier can't be sure what the aircraft is doing, but there's no doubt it belongs to the United States. The Russian picks up the phone next to him, providing him with a direct line to his commander in the facility. You better come see this, sir, the soldier says. Moments later, his commander comes flying into the room. He looks at the data coming in via radar station at the top of the world. Get me the Kremlin, the commander shouts. After a brief discussion with Vladimir Putin and his generals, the order is given to mobilize Russian forces in the Arctic. For decades, the Russian military has been planning for such an event. Over the past few years, they deployed new missiles and aircraft to the Arctic. The Northern Fleet underwent several upgrades to allow for better striking capabilities, and new infrastructure such as roads and railways has made transporting supplies through the region slightly easier. Now, the Russian forces in the Arctic have taken the U.S. stealth bomber entering their airspace as an act of war. Their forces travel west toward the NATO soldiers stationed in Norway. And even though Finland has not technically become part of NATO, Russia has its sights set on their Arctic region as well. Russian soldiers dressed in white combat gear and skis follow tanks across the snowy landscape. A platoon of snowmobiles races across the frozen tundra to provide reconnaissance for the heavy forces bringing up the rear. Just north of the Norwegian archipelago of Svalbard, the ice atop the Arctic Sea begins to rumble. There's a groaning sound before a loud crack like glass shattering against a concrete floor. A moment later, three Russian nuclear submarines smash through the ice and prepare their ballistic missiles for launch. The Arctic Russian forces have been given orders that if they encounter any resistance from NATO, they are to unleash the full might of their arsenals at the enemy. NATO has already deployed troops to make a stand in Svalbard. They don't know the reason for the Russian mobilization, but it seems Putin's about to launch a full-scale war in the Arctic. NATO forces spot the lights of Russian armored vehicles approaching. The wind whips up snow, causing low visibility. Each side is trained for this day, but if either fires a shot, it could escalate things to World War III status. Russian forces stop at the edge of their territory. The soldiers are at a standoff. Russia sends a message to NATO command telling them to call back their stealth bomber and remain out of Russian airspace. They receive no reply. The US didn't believe that the new radar system set up in the Arctic could detect their stealth aircraft, but they were wrong. Rather than admitting it was a mistake, encrypted orders are sent to the B-2 bomber that was en route to conduct a mission on the other side of the world. The Russian surveillance team tracks the aircraft as it turns around and exits Russian airspace. The Kremlin gives the order for its Arctic troops to stand down but remain alert. As NATO and Russian Arctic forces stare one another down, a covert Russian operation is being carried out to disrupt oil and natural gas supplies from reaching Europe. Deep in the Baltic waters, Russian operatives are placing explosive charges on the recently repaired Baltic Sea pipeline. Russia hopes that by stopping the natural gas flow from Norway to the rest of Europe, the EU will have no choice but to buy more Russian fossil fuels. However, NATO vessels have been diligently patrolling the waters around the pipeline. When word reached them that things in the Arctic were escalating, 
they doubled their efforts to make sure there was no foul play. NATO ships come across a Russian sub next to the pipeline. It's clear they have ill intentions. Warning depth charges are dropped to signal the sub to surface for talks. The Russians believe they're under attack and inform the Kremlin that NATO has declared war. Vladimir Putin gives the order to fire all weapons. The nuclear subs in the North Sea launch their ballistic missiles over the top of the world toward the United States. Russian and NATO soldiers open fire at one another near Svalbard. Long-range missiles race across Russian borders, hitting key targets in Europe. All hell breaks loose. And it all started with Russia's aggressive expansion in the Arctic and miscommunication within its ranks. It's a scary time we're living in, and even though things have not yet escalated to the point of war in the Arctic, it doesn't mean they won't in the future. Even as Russia pours men and resources into the war in Ukraine, they're also spending vast amounts of money and sending supplies to the far north. Satellite images recently acquired show that over the past year, military bases, airfields, and mining infrastructure has been built up across the Arctic. This new data on Russian expansion in the north has led NATO to double its presence in the region. But why is everyone scrambling to secure the frozen wasteland that sits atop our planet? What's so important that Russia is using precious resources that they desperately need to fight in Ukraine to expand in the Arctic? The answers to all these questions have to do with money, power, and influence. First of all, let's discuss what's being built by Russia and where they're focusing their efforts. The new series of satellite images show that Russia has been focused on building radar bases at their Olenegorsk site on the Kola Peninsula. They've also installed five Resonance N radar systems at Ostrovnoy, a base located by the Barents Sea near Norway and Finland. Russia claims that these radar systems are capable of detecting any stealth aircraft that NATO might fly over the region. At their northernmost facility, the Russians have expanded their runway at Nagorskoye airfield, which suggests they're using it to bring in larger aircraft and more supplies. What all this newly constructed infrastructure in the Arctic means is that Putin sees the region as playing a vital role in the future of Russia. But you're probably thinking, why now? What's driven Putin and his allies to increase their presence in the Arctic when they're losing this war in Ukraine? Well, it might come as a surprise, but Russia's always viewed the frozen lands and waters of the Arctic as absolutely vital to the nation's security and economy. There may be no more important part of the Russian Federation than its territory in the Arctic. And while the warming of the planet due to climate change might be the biggest threat to life as we know it, this global catastrophe is a godsend for Russia. As the planet warms, the ice in the Arctic is melting. This has opened up new opportunities in the region, which Russia plans to take full advantage of. As the ice becomes thinner in the winters and melts faster in the spring due to warmer temperatures, it's creating more shipping lanes across the Arctic region. This will allow Russia to move their exports into Asian and European markets much more quickly, skipping the Suez Canal as they move their goods through the new northern shipping lanes. In fact, it's estimated that the northern sea route that's becoming easier to clear of ice could cut two weeks off the amount of time it takes to move goods from Asia to Europe and vice versa. The problem is, Russia is positioning itself to be able to monopolize the North Sea route to ensure that any ships passing through have to rely on Russian ports and infrastructure. Perhaps Putin put it best when he said the North Sea route will allow Russia to fully reveal its export potential and to establish effective logistic routes, including to Southeast Asia. Basically, Putin stating that the future of Russia's economy hinges on its ability to control the region of the Arctic that the North Sea route travels through. So, it's clear there's an economic reason that Russia wants to expand further and further into the Arctic in recent years. But it's not just about shipping lanes. The Arctic also holds vast amounts of resources that Russia utilizes. A staggering 20% of Russia's GDP comes from the Arctic, which is incredible when you think of how sparsely populated and barren the region is. The most valuable resources for Russia in this part of the world are fossil fuels, in particular oil and natural gas. There are much more accessible places to drill for oil and natural gas than in the Arctic. But Putin knows if he can get enough investors to utilize the region, it'll generate a huge amount of wealth and resources for Russia. This is why the Kremlin gave $41 billion in tax incentives for companies to develop the Vostok oil field in 2019. The goal is for Russia to produce around 2 million more barrels of oil per day than it already does. The following year, the Russian government approved a $300 billion infrastructure bill that would allow for more drilling of oil and liquefied natural gas in the Arctic, along with money earmarked for the construction of the infrastructure to store and transport fossil fuels in the region. All of this goes to show just how important the Arctic is to the economy of Russia. 
Without controlling the huge amounts of resources in the area, Russia would literally be unable to fuel its military or industries. These resources alone are enough to explain why Russia wants to expand its influence at the top of the world so badly. However, other than fossil fuels, there's another vital resource that the region is swimming with. Around one-third of all fish harvested by Russia come from the Arctic waters in the north. In fact, this industry is only growing as warming waters are forcing schools of fish further north to seek cooler waters. And since fish are a key food source for the people of Russia and many other parts of the world, the Kremlin wants to ensure they can control the waters that the fish are migrating to. All of these economic ventures require Russia to connect the Arctic to the rest of the world through shipping lanes into the Atlantic and the Pacific. This is why they're pouring tons of money into more advanced icebreakers to keep the North Sea route free of ice. Even as the war rages in Ukraine, Russia can't stop its expansion into the Arctic, otherwise it could lead to a lack of vital resources in the future and economic collapse. This is why new roads, railroads, and transportation facilities are popping up throughout the region. Now the question becomes, with tightening sanctions, citizens being conscripted into the military and a mass exodus of skilled labor, how does Russia plan on building and maintaining its infrastructure in the Arctic? The answer is, it can't, at least not to the capacity it needs to. This is why the Kremlin is desperately looking for investors from China to India to utilize the region and further Russia's plans to exploit the resources of the Arctic. As of right now, foreign investors are hesitant to dump massive sums of money into a country that's losing a war or into a region that's just not as accessible as many other resource-rich areas of the world. As important as the Arctic is to Russia's economy, it's not nearly as important to other countries. But Russia's expansion isn't just about money, it's about power as well. Ever since the Cold War, Russia's seen the Arctic as a key strategic location. There are several reasons for this, but the main one is that the shortest distance from Russia to North America is over the Arctic. This became incredibly important during the Cold War, when nuclear ballistic missiles were developed to obliterate an enemy. And now Vladimir Putin wants to ensure that if Russia ever did need to strike at the heart of the US, it would have the capability to do so. But it's not just about launching missiles. Like with almost all military decisions made by Russia, a lot of their expansion in the Arctic has to do with keeping NATO forces away from their borders. There are those in the Kremlin that believe if the North Sea route is open to all nations, including those that belong to NATO, it will threaten the very existence of the Russian Federation. Therefore, Russian leaders have gone back to their tried and true method of militarizing a region to make sure no one but Russia can control it. To do this, Russia is not just expanding on land, but in the sea as well. The Kremlin announced in 2017 it would be upgrading its capabilities of its northern fleet, which guards Russian interests in the waters of the Arctic. This has led to the construction of even more icebreakers to ensure that the northern fleet can move freely through the region. However, Russia is still far behind NATO in terms of naval capabilities, and it knows it. This is why a lot of the modernization of the northern fleet focuses on defensive upgrades instead of offensive ones. It's been a common tactic for the Russian military, as it never seems to have the resources or money necessary to construct effective offensive weapons and vehicles, which has been made painfully clear by what's happening in Ukraine. One of the most significant reasons for the recent expansion of Russian military bases in the Arctic likely has to do with two of the most northern European nations. On May 18, 2022, Finland and Sweden submitted their applications to join NATO. This was incredibly alarming for Russia, as it would mean that two neutral countries that both have a claim to the Arctic were now planning on joining the enemy. If these two nations officially join the organization, NATO forces will literally be on Russia's doorstep. In fact, once Finland and Sweden are accepted into NATO, seven out of the eight Arctic nations will be NATO members. Putin knows this, and it's one of the reasons Russia's been in a rush to build up its defenses in the Arctic. And even though Russia will never admit it, another reason they're expanding further into the Arctic could have to do with sabotage. It's estimated that somewhere around 30% of Europe's natural gas comes from Norway, most of which is obtained from the country's southern coast. However, some gas is secured from the Arctic. There are huge amounts of resources being sent from Norway to Europe, and if something were to happen to those pipelines, there could be drastic consequences. For example, in September 2022, the Baltic Sea pipeline suffered a massive leak. This led to a gas shortage, and prices skyrocketed in Europe. Further investigations done by Swedish security agencies suggested the leak was most likely due to sabotage. As of right now, there's no definitive proof that Russia or anyone associated with the Kremlin had any involvement in the sabotage of the pipeline. However, many military and security officers are keeping a close eye on the investigation and any involvement by Russia 
Expanding its presence in the Arctic could allow the Russian military to launch covert missions to disrupt natural gas and oil supplies running into Europe. This is why NATO ships have doubled their presence in the Baltic and North Seas to try to act as a deterrent for any bad actors who might have plans to tamper with the critical infrastructure in the region. Russia has been expanding its presence in the Arctic just so that NATO countries can't, and it's not out of the realm of possibility that Russian operatives are carrying out acts of sabotage just to weaken NATO's ability to acquire resources or expand its influence. But the military buildup over the last couple of years also has another strategic importance for Russia, and that strategy lurks just below the frigid Arctic waters. The current regime controlling the Russian Federation may believe that a war with NATO is inevitable. Therefore, the expansion in the Arctic is also being done to further the second strike capabilities of their ballistic missile submarines, which sit near the Kola Peninsula. It's in this region that at least seven of Russia's ballistic missile subs reside. The increased military presence in the Arctic has allowed for better resupply and maintenance opportunities for Russian subs, ensuring their second strike capabilities remain strong. Russian submarines in the Arctic and the Northern Fleet are the only groups of vessels that have the ability to reach the North Atlantic and European Arctic waters if a conflict ever did break out. The ships in this region have a direct line of attack to both the Barents and Norwegian seas if Russia ever needs to advance its forces into the area. According to military analysts who have been keeping a close eye on Russia's Arctic expansion, if a conflict ever did break out, the Northern Fleet and the subs in the region would play a crucial role in attacking NATO's eastern flank. Russia's military developments in the region also have a less threatening purpose as well. Much of the new infrastructure and ships in the north are solely there to aid in the economic interests of Russia. The environmental conditions in the Arctic are incredibly harsh, which means things will go wrong. The increased military development in the area may be to protect civilian projects to drill for oil and procure natural gas or mine important minerals, which are normally aided by the army if things go wrong. Therefore, some of Russia's presence in the Arctic might have nothing to do with war. Or perhaps the Russian expansion is just a revamped form of Cold War posturing. Maybe Putin never planned on using the newly constructed yet desperately understaffed bases in the Arctic. Instead, it's all just a smokescreen to distract from Russia's failure in Ukraine and to trick the rest of the world into thinking Russia still has the capability of expanding wherever it wants to. There's little doubt that Russia needs the resources in the Arctic to fuel its economy and warm Russian homes. The North Sea route would definitely help speed up the transportation of goods from East Asia to Europe, which could benefit Russia greatly if they controlled the waterway. What this comes down to is that the military capabilities of Russia in the Arctic are not as strong as Putin would like the world to think. The Northern Fleet and ballistic submarines in the region could certainly deal out a massive amount of destruction if they unleash their arsenals, but if war ever did break out, there's very little chance that Russian forces stationed in the Arctic would be able to hold back NATO. Now watch what would happen if Russia and the US went to war, or check out why did the Nazis have a secret base in the Arctic.